You're listening to the Back Porch Talk Podcast. Danny and Jason had many discussions and debates on the back porch while making pivotal investment moves with assets. That's right, with trading cards. They welcome you to the back porch and right into those discussions about current sports news with a fresh and unique twist. So come on and join us. Welcome to the Back Porch Top Podcast. I'm your co host, Jason. It's your co host, Danny. Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> Danny, the Milwaukee Bucks have fired head coach Adrian Griffin. We thought this was going to happen earlier. I think I gave it 15 games. Uh, I think you gave it 20, 25. Yep. Uh, and this is just purely based upon how the Milwaukee Bucks are looking defensively. Currently, the Bucks are ranked 22 in defense efficiency. Last year, they were ranked number four uh, in defense efficiency. And I'll just say this, Danny, there's a whole lot of variables to that. Um, of course, the trade of Drew Holiday uh, in getting Damian Lillard and where Dame doesn't play uh, that great of defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then also you have to consider um, this defense as on the perimeter you know, in general. And I think that's something that uh, was a huge detriment. I mean, you also have Jay Crowder, who was injured, uh, who could provide some uh, help defensively there as well. Uh, but this is bottom putting where girls can get it, man. Listen, the defense is just atrocious. Uh, the drop coverage defense, it, we did go back to that after, what, three games into the season where there's re- reports that Adrian Griffin went to the team and said, hey, what are y'all thinking about this defense? What do we need to do? And they went back to drop coverage defense and, defense and uh, it seemed to have worked. But they still need to address some things on the defensive side of the ball. I personally thought there was going to be, from an offensive, offensive perspective, I thought it was going to be more pick and roll action between Giannis and Dame and Lillard. I haven't seen that. I've seen a lot of pick and roll action between Dame and Chris and Dame and Brooke, but not as much with Dame and Giannis. Um, then there were reports about um, Bobby Portis getting upset. Uh, at coach uh, earlier in the season after a game. Uh, I want to say those was when they were in Vegas. Coupled with that and reports about what Giannis has said, well, not reports, but what Giannis said about you all need to get better. Uh, even the uh, equipment manager needs to get better. I, I think that was kind of an indirect shot at uh, coach. But then also Giannis said it at, at the post game pressure and I think uh Stephen A. Smith asked the question and Giannis just came back and said you know they just feel like they're just not organized defensively at the end of the games and stuff there's just a whole lot going on um and this is a championship caliber team uh with a first year head coach I think that some that's something that should have been looked at thought about <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm getting the coach. Uh, but here we are. There are reports that Doc Rivers is uh, the front runner uh, to be the head coach. I don't know if it's this not only for this season, but chances are Doc will probably say, hey, I want a contract, mm-hmm. multi-year contract. Um, so we'll see where this goes, Danny. But I think something has to been done. Uh, earlier today, there was a trade by the Miami Heat to get uh, Terry Rozier. Uh, and I immediately put into our group chat, Rozier to the Heat, it's been trouble for the Bucks. <laughs> uh, but she'd be worried because defensively, how will the Bucks match up? If our defense is this bad now, what will it be in the playoffs? And I think that's where the decision had to be made. 
yes, we have a 30 and 13 record, but how far does this get us down the line in the playoffs? This is where we are. What say you, Danny? Jason, this does not surprise me. <laughs> as I stated, as soon as this hire happened, he was on the hot seat from jump. And then the trade for Dame was made. And that just, it was just too many variables in the mix for coach. And he was set up to fail from my perspective. Yeah. You can't bring a new coach in into this type of environment where as a championship team, you bring in a superstar and he's trying to learn on the job. Then you also have the firing of Terry Stotts in the preseason. Giannis has to take some accountability on this. And you got to look at, too, where in these type of circumstances, the organization has to step up and be the leader and not always listen to the player. Because from the outside looking in, when this actual hire happened, like, huh? And it was like, oh, Giannis signed off on this. This is what Giannis wanted because Nick Nurse was actually the one they were pursuing as one of the finalists for the job. And Nick Nurse has actually been through it already. He, he's been through the playoffs. He has a system. Look at what he's doing in Philadelphia right now. All in all, man, I just think he was set up to fail. And the team didn't respond. And the players have to take a look in the mirror, too, because some of this is on them. Because if you watch some of those games, the effort wasn't there. Like, it goes in spurts. And you have some highly paid guys, some talented guys. It, it was just too much going on. Middleton was hurt. He was on a minutes restriction. Now he's kind of coming back. There is too many things going on for him to be uh, successful. And I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago where all-star break was his deadline and possibly trade trade deadline. So it's happened. They have time to respond because you're about halfway through the season to the coach who, if it is Doc Rivers, which to me is like, okay, because you really don't have a lot of options because you're in the middle of the season. So that's where this one gets kind of tricky as far as that's concerned. And we've seen Doc, what he's done in the playoffs. You're kind of back at square one, depending on how they respond to Doc Rivers. I'm assuming there'll be a a period, like a honeymoon period, where they play really well for him. But then once you get into the playoffs, are we going to see the same thing that we saw in previous years with this team, where they were not successful? And Doc Rivers, when he was with Philadelphia, didn't make adjustments. It was talked about in our chat. So we brought it up. We've talked about this in the past, too, when we were talking about the Sixers when they played the Celtics. We're just, uh, the rumor is Doc Rivers. So until we know officially, then we can really speak on it. But I wish Coach the best. And he'll land somewhere because he was a great assistant coach. And hopefully if, if he gets another shot, it's with a team that's rebuilding and not at this stage of the game. So he has a better shot to succeed. And I'll say this, Danny, this has been in the works behind the scenes for a little bit of time. You don't make this move without having a short list of coaches to go to. <laughs> so I'm really wondering how long, how far back did they just have the feeling like, yeah, something got to change? I um, think it was the tournament, Jason. When they, when they got beat by Indiana and Las Vegas and on national TV, and you could kind of see, and like you talk about the Bobby Portis incident and then Giannis making his comments. I think at that point, when Bobby Portis had that little blow up, I think that's where, because we've been my, my, marching with this the whole way along, kind of moving our, our milestone date of when he may get fired. And I think it was around that time where they started saying, all right, we got to get somebody else in here. I think Adrian Griffin, he'll land, but it'll be in the assistant role. Mm -hmm. uh, I think any anybody who would would tell you the defense of the Milwaukee Bucks was atrocious. What's going to be really interesting, Danny, if it is Doc Rivers or any coach, is this going to be the before and after mm -hmm. uh, aspect? And I think this is going to be you know really good actually for the Bucks, the players because. Now it's going to be the onus on them 
they're going to have All Star Week mm-hmm. um, to have some practice with this new coach. They can he can install a portion of the, his system, if you will. Uh, and it's going to be really interesting to see the defense before and after. Um, I think one of the things too is the player the players just weren't inspired um, by coach. This is be real. I mean, I, I didn't have confidence in the system. Uh, and so with that, it's kind of like with this new coach, what inspiration can he really, you know, put into the team? And that's what I, what one thing I'll be looking for, as well as the X's and O's, obviously, um, defense. And how is Dame going to play defense? How is he going to guard? Um, that's something that I think needs to happen. I agree with you. I think uh, Coach uh, Riffer was kind of in a bad position here, uh, especially when Terry Stotts left mm-hmm. as an assistant and he got another assistant to come in later on down the road. I don't even know if that assistant specialized in defense. Like, could the Milwaukee Bucks have gotten a defensive-minded assistant instead of firing Coach? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, but it also speaks violence because you don't make this change without the ownership approval. Oh yeah, you're going to eat in the cost of Coach Griffith's uh, contract. Not only this year, but but for the next, I believe, three years. Whole lot of questions, Danny. Hopefully, we'll get some answers soon. And now, Danny, on to the NFL, where the playoffs this past weekend was amazing. I'll say this, the game uh, that intrigued me the most uh, was that of the Green Bay Packers facing off against the San Francisco 49ers in San Fran. And the Packers had this game, Danny. They had this game. (laughs) There was a, a couple of interceptions dropped by the defense. Um, a pick six was dropped. Basically, uh, that could have done wonders. Uh, the defense of the Packers actually played pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, Jordan Love, even though he threw two interceptions, one interception in the, the final drive, last throw of the season, he was trying to make something happen. Um, and the other interception was a tip ball. Um, but he threw for 194 yards, had command of, over the offense, but also threw for two touchdowns. The Packers ran the ball well. Aaron Jones, 18 carries for 108 yards. They really did. Now, I went into this game in my mind thinking the Packers are a young team. And if it's a close game, it's going to really prepare them for next year. Um, or if it's a blowout, it's because they're really young. Mm-hmm. Um, either way, I was happy that we beat the Cowboys. <laughs> that would that to me would made my playoffs. Yeah, I, I really wasn't expecting a whole lot of the, the Packers in the playoffs. Um, and so the fact that they hung in there and they were really won this game. I'm going to say it, they really won this game. I think it speaks volumes into their season next year. I think they're going to make some changes. I think they're going to shore up Jordan Love for the long haul. Because Jordan Love, to me, has proved proven that he can ball. And if you put the weapons around him and a good offense around him, um, play calling around him, he's going to do very well. Um, so I think the Packers have a bright future. Um, 49ers, they, you know, advanced pretty to me, had a couple of interceptions dropped, as I mentioned, 252 yards, a touchdown. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do in the um, conference championship game. What say you, Danny, about our NFL weekend, playoff weekend? Jason, on that last play when Jordan Love threw the interception, if you watch the replay, he could have ran for like 30 yards and you guys had t- time out still. So I didn't know. I understand he was trying to make a play, but 
if he would have took just one more second, he had, it was just open field because everyone was in the middle of the field and he was on the edge and he threw across his body. It was an interesting game because I thought from your perspective, you guys would have ran with Aaron Jones more too because they he was gashing them. But it was it was kind of going in spurts, and you and Debo got hurt in this game too, up right up off the top. So that was an advantage to the Green Bay Packers. But credit to Christian McCaffrey and the 49ers defense for making some plays. Uh, Brock Purdy got bailed out, like you mentioned, because uh, he was not on his game. Curious to see what they do. Will they keep the defensive coordinator? Because that's always a topic of discussion. But these last few games, you know, the defense showed up. Uh, so they have a lot of decisions to make to see what they're going to do uh, as far as just overall on the team perspective. But, yeah, the 49ers now move on to play the Detroit Lions, who pulled it out against Tampa Bay. Right at the end, Baker Mayfield threw a pick uh, in the last possession for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, that was a that was a great game to watch, and it'll be interesting to see Jared Goff on the road because you know he doesn't play the same away from uh, the home field. So I'm curious to see what he does. And then on the AFC side, there was an epic battle between the Chiefs and the Bills, where we all know as sports fans that Bills miss wide right. <laughs> and when I look at Kansas City, man, because Michael Harmon did, you know, he fumbled twice. I think sometimes they overthink things where you had Pacheco who was gashing the Buffalo Bills and running all over him. He ran all the way to the three-yard line. Why don't you just give the brother the ball and finish off the, the drive instead of running that play? And they it almost costed him. They almost cost him the game because McCole Hartman fumbled twice in the red zone. So they were lucky to get out of that game to uh, advance to play the Baltimore Ravens, who brought it in the second half. Their defense stepped up and shut down C.J. Stroud and the Texans and Lamar. Two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, 100 yards rushing. Uh, so they're coming in hot. <clears throat> so th there's going to be two good games, I think, this weekend uh, where I, I still can't pick the Baltimore-Kansas City game. Uh, but right now, I'm waiting to see what Debo Samuel's status is to see if if San Francisco will win that game. I think they will because Jared Goff, like I said, is just a different player on the road. But you never know now, based on what we've seen to date, anything can happen. Yeah, Dave, this one's going to be hard to call, man. Listen, I, I have to say that, for one, you have to get kudos to the NFC North for representing. I mean, let's be real. I mean, the big upset of the playoffs has been that of the Packers beating the Cowboys mm -hmm. NFC North. The Lions progressing or moving forward to the championship round, NFC North. And we did not see this coming. Um, I have to say this, man, the Lions against the San Francisco 49ers, I'm going for the Lions, man. Yeah, I hope they win because I can't stand Shanahan. So I'm <laughs> definitely pulling for Detroit. I'm pulling for Detroit. And I think really I I saw it, you know, when the Lions were playing at the end there and they were celebrating. And I, I tell some of the team was taking it all in. Mm-hmm from the Detroit fans. And I think they're going to take that with them, quite honestly. I think the Lions are going to win this game, man. I hope you're I right, really... Jason, because you know my disdain for Kyle Shanahan and what he did to us in the Super Bowl. And I I'll say this, man, Ravens against the Chiefs. Oh, no, dang, man. You know, it's just hard to go against um, Mahomes. This one's going to be a tough one, man. Initially, I had Ravens and 49ers. Um, but I'm I'm going Lions and I think the Ravens might get them on kind of that defense. Defense is playing how, great. I don't know how many more times the uh, Chiefs can go on the road here and, and pull out a win. I'm leaning towards the Ravens on this one. I'm torn, man, because I really want to see Lamar get to the Super Bowl. Yeah, all the stuff he's been through. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, this is one of those games where I'm I'm just gonna be a fan. Sorry, right, man. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I'm always pulling for Mahomes, and but I want to see Lamar. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with you. I'm gonna go with the Ravens because I want to see Lamar get to the Super Bowl. But if he doesn't, if the Ravens don't win, I won't be upset because for whatever reason, the 49ers make it to the Super Bowl. The Chiefs can beat the 49ers. Thank you for joining us at That Ports Talk Podcast. You can also join us on Twitter by tweeting us at back underscore podcast. For more information, you can go to our website, which is backporchtalkpodcast.com. You can also email us at backporchtalkpodcast at gmail.com. Again, thank you for joining us. And remember that there's enough hate in the world. So go ahead and spread a little love.